Hey! Oh, you got me, um, singing the Ultra Instinct theme there. I apologize. I was probably really cringy. But hey, it's Rated J here from, uh, Cynical Gaming and, uh, Rated J over on YouTube. And today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. And we're on the fifth case, and we just got through the first day of the investigations of this new trial. And let me tell you, yesterday, it did nothing to help my confusion, because by the end of it, I was even more confused than I was at the start. So, uh, we're gonna jump right into that, and continue right where we left off. Episode 5, Rise from the Ashes. Day 2, Trial Former. I, I, I don't ever remember it saying Trial Former, but... I mean, February 23rd, 9.34 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number Deuce. But, uh, yeah. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there's still a lot of gray areas. I, I'm gonna have to agree with Phoenix there because he's probably as confused as I am. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me. No matter what the outcome, I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. I mean, why would you believe in her? She's the one telling everybody that they went ahead and, uh, you know, she killed the dude. What's up? Uh, I'm gonna butcher your name, so I'm not gonna try, but just know I said, you know, just know that I know you said yo. <laughs> Hi there. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes. A defense attorney should never believe their clients. But why? Uh, um, yeah. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. This is true, but, uh... I mean... We've been doing pretty good with everybody else we helped. But never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. Well, Mia, for one, wasn't a bitch. But, uh, and that is... You're not a defense attorney. He went with the obvious. Why? You could have pointed something out. Hey, Tim. But, uh, yeah. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna need it! And she's telling me... She's the one I'm defending, but yet she's telling me, like, good luck, you're not gonna win. It's it, on it. Mm. My first trial without a Fey helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. And this is very true. We do not have Tits McGee coming in all ghosty and stuff, so, yeah. I'll be alone in here. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. We do, we do. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Woohoo! February 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 9. And we're going up against... Against our whole body again. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. Oh, edgy, edgy, edgy. Uh, I, I don't want. I don't. I don't like the fact that we're gonna have to go up against Edgeworth again, especially after helping him get off his own two murder cases. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. That was, uh, that was a good one. Dude, Rage 2 has been amazing. That's awesome, dude. I'm glad you like it. 
I hope that per that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has been committed an unparalleled, perdonable crime. I'm, I'm just gonna say that. I'm, uh, not only this, but she was rash of enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. What did you do, woman? However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. Is this a, like, are we sending her to the freaking gallows after this? What are we doing? There was a witness to her crime. A professional. Yeah, we seen her professional witness. She ain't good. We're gonna have to talk to the lunch lady girl. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution. The pro yeah, prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Star, to the stand. We cough up, Queen. <clears throat> Nah. Hmm. I love how Edgeworth is just throwing out everything you've done for him and saying, F you. Hmm. Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho ho, caviar! I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Nasty, yeah, nasty queen for sure. And after all, she sells lunches and is the most likely a woman of the night, per se. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir, did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, your honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar? It's so tasty, it hurts! I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. Ew. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession, now! <laughs> Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running lunch land these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? I tried caviar. It's cursed to me. Can't say I've tried it. Can't say I ever will. At least I hope not. Very well. Witness, please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. God damn it, Judge! Hurry up! Hmm, very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor. As Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Oh, yeah, okay, I, I get it. You look like a professional. Yeah. Uh-huh, what, what, what exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. What? I could have pinned her as a hooker. I mean, yeah. She was a first-rate homicide detective. Wow, The star was a detective? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up, Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. 
V v very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Stark. I really could not pin that on her. Like, she does not look like any type of special investigator that I have seen. We've done four cases already, and Jesus, I pinned her as a streetwalker at this point because Jesus. Plus, she already has multiple boyfriends. I'm pretty sure she's going to hook up with the judge after this one. I wonder the places she went undercover. <laughs> we all, we know who framed who. <laughs> if I might have the court's attention over here. Well then, let's hear this. And we need that map, please. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the block of A block, in the back of A block, in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. But how would she have the... Oh, welcome to the stream, Blackfist. Drop and shoot. Showing love. Thank you, man. That's awesome, dude. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this violent witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. Thank you. Thank you for the floor plans. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright, uh, I, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Ah, uh, why, why does Phoenix gotta be a loser? Like, why do we have to pick on Phoenix all the time? I mean, the boy's just doing his job. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Mr. Judge, you... No! Look, I thought we were boys, okay? We've been through a lot here. And now you're just gonna turn me... Tur turn on me like that? No, no, no. That's unfair, thank you. Wait, are they talking about me? Yeah, yeah, Phoenix, they are, dude. I, I, I feel you, buddy. I feel you. <laughs> Witnesses account Time to press everything people Because I have no clue what the hell I'm doing Somehow I always knew a day like this would come Um Okay I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend When I sent something perhaps It was my finally honed detective's intuition at work Though so, the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garnished car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Thought it was the stomach. Definitely thought it was the stomach, she said. Hmm, and bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. It's, it, it is hard out there for Phoenix, man. Like, seriously, the boy can't catch a break at all. He, he's been through a lot already, and this is still the first game. Like, the, the boy needs a vacation or something. Even though he hasn't taken a case in two months. But anyway, so, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I, I'm still thinking about it. it. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. You, you are... I am not the Black Knight from Monty Python, sir. You. 
Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Here we go, people. Um, Phoenix is in kind of trouble. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. Hold it! How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime. And yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to easing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I wonder what it is, because she really does sound like she has, like, a bone to pick with prosecutors everywhere. I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired? To me, prosecutors are nothing more than words. That said, I am a pro. As you know, my testimony is unbiased and flawless. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You hate prosecutors, and that's pretty much who I'm defending right now. While being bashed down by another prosecutor, it's a really dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Which one? Which boyfriend? Because at this point you have two, you have told us. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, but the security guard. That, that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other bo She has three now! Can I join you? Dirty woman! The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. No, no. No, 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 no. I, I kind of agree, Tim. I kind of agree. I mean, she might be playing the field or something, but mm, no, no. I, I'll, I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. So she out there, good. Yo, she pimping hard too. She does have a, she does have three, but she's in the, uh, the ballpark for a fourth now. <laughs> the security guard room is in the lot in A block. It's up to the second level if you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I park in B block. So, she was in B-Block when she witnessed the crime. When I sent something, perhaps... When I sent something, perhaps it was my finally owned detective's intuition at work. Yeah, I was here about this. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? More like she probably set it up somehow. It felt like... How would you say? Oh, yes. It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. What? what? I have no idea what that means. If you and me both, Judge. You and me both. Speaking of a detective's intuition, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes. Well, it was like a young cheese. Uh, young cheese? What, he hasn't aged well, or what, what are we doing here? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. 
then I must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. <laughs> then I I don't understand what half these people say either. So that that huh you're throwing out there, I'm with you. Believe me, I feel you. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, where in the lot I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Objection! Ah, <laughs> uh, what's up, Kane? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. Though the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garnished car. Just because she was standing there doesn't mean she did, she did it. But garnished car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, I'm still confused as hell with this case, so... It's probably gonna slip up a rot. So, I mean, if you like that kind of thing... Oh, welcome to my fail. Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed it was. Edgeworth can't catch a break either. Like... He just got off of two murder cases, which he was on trial for, and now somebody killed the dude and shoved him in his trunk, but he killed the dude with his own knife. That's just messed up. Somebody hates Edgeworth. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you were sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Well, let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we could always nitpick. Yeah, because that's what you want to do in court. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms, ergo. You are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future. Rookie. Uh, Rookie? I am undefeated, thank you! Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. Would she going to poison me with her lunches? Oh, I don't like that look. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. She's going to feed me to people. That, that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism. I may be relegated to the lonely post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. That's not good. Uh, a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. Glad she's a photographer, too. In fact, one of my lunches is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? So, not <laughs> You think I'd show it to you? A prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the Photography Division of Criminal Affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Oh, the moment of the crime is photographed by Angel Star. Oh, that is unmistakably Lean Lana Sky. But wait, what? What chest inside? What? Whoa, what are we doing? Why are they rigged with cameras? Because she's sneaky as hell, and she's probably a cam girl anyway, so... So, what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Was that actually in the photo? Now, if she was holding a knife in her right hand, why isn't it in a photo? 
Russian prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. I bet you I'm gonna have to use that photo there. Kate on Skyrim found a chest inside of a wall outside. Really? I I have to find that. <laughs> Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Ah, uh, mm hmm Yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organ. Why? Why do they teach that to prosecutors? Oh, I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You, you can't testify as her alibi to kill an egg, I mean a person. Hmm, perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife, what then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. I'm betting I'm gonna have to present the uh, picture on that one thing she said, so I'm gonna probably go back and try that. Hopefully it works. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? You took a picture beforehand, right? Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought the weapon the down the murder weapon. I... I see. It, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is false. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What, what, what do we do? Is this... Is, is my sister guilty? You are the father! <laughs> Wrong show, man. <laughs> Wrong show. So she's able to take pics but not save him. That... That's what has me wondering too like she was able to take the picture the picture didn't have the knife in it uh, so what the hell is going on for some reason having her panicking next to me makes me calmer D -d don't smile like that okay I'm gonna get to the point I'm gonna ask you guys when I send up there the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to the garnished car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her hand. Now, do I present that picture? What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Now, do I present the picture with, uh, that she showed here when we pressed her? Where she doesn't have the knife in her hand. What would you guys do? in this, uh, in this sense. Because I'm thinking we should show that. The picture's here if you're wondering about it. When she said, when she said she was holding a knife in her right hand, we clearly see both hands, but there is no knife. You say present the picture. Okay. We'll go ahead and try that. Music stopped, it worked. And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Skye stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. I'll put your damn lunches back in the bag! That was when she put the body in the trunk. It True, but when she was saying that, that picture at the time is what she took when she was saying she seen her with a knife, but there was no life. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch, but isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? When, then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? See? Oh, the, the vape, you stand still. <laughs> uh -huh. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? 
objection. There had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. <laughs> Yet, it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Uh, and how can you tell that? God, Edgeworth is still an asshole, and I love him. I, I like Edgeworth. But I mean, he's doing his job, and that plane needs to go away. <laughs> Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. Uh huh. Yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. How would that much blood get all over her like that? She only stabbed him once, she said. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem except you. Mr. Wright! Are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? I legit thought that plane was someone ominous. Some ominous music playing in the background. No, it was a plane. It was a plane. Uh, you got a better idea? Objection. Uh, wait. That contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Thank you, Phoenix. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Uh, that's it. If you run out of lunch, you order you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. I thought you were flawless with dumb dumb hooker. What? Uh, good advice. I'm sure I understand it, but, uh, good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was called calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Are we sure? Are we sure it was premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in this photograph. Well, those are gloves. Surgical gloves made of thin rubber. Most likely, why would she have those on? Uh huh. If it, if it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. And didn't she cut her hand with the knife? If that was after the murder, she already would have had that cut, right? Ah. Why don't we ever get to talk to the one that's on trial? These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. Let's press it. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves. Ah, oh, Edgeworth, what? I like you so much, stop being a dick! The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsy. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. I hate this one. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ah! Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she could prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this was pre wasn't premeditated. It, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright! We can make it! You've said that before. 
Oh, I'm pretty fatal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we've heard this before. Okay. Now, she changed it up. Let me look through the evidence. We got this. This doesn't show that she has the cut on her hands, which she said she had on her when she uh, used the knife. What is this? That's the parking garage. The phone. I don't know anything about this. It's only a flesh wound. Hold still. <laughs> right? Uh, the mur Does anything say the murder weapon usually in Edward's toolbox traces of victim's blood, no prints? Record of parking. Uh, we don't need that. Death due to loss of blood. One knife wound died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Victim's memo found in the trunk. Probably upon the sky. Mm. There has to be some. If it was premeditated, she wouldn't have gotten her coat covered in blood. Do you think I have to, uh... Well, let me get to the point where I'm thinking. But do you think I have to show the picture again? The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. I don't... I'm... There's no prints on the knife, so that that proves somebody was wearing gloves. Whoever did it was wearing gloves. Um, but there's there's if it was Edward's knife, wouldn't there be his prints on it as well? Um, investigator's card. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with it. 4 p.m. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. So he died around 5:30, 5:12. But the murder took place at 5:15. Uh, oh, this has me uh, British stamped. Uh, Property of Lana Sky, last call made to her sister Emma at 518 on the day of the murder. Okay, but... Mm. So the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to the garnished car. Uh, it has to be something here. We already pressed it. G... Do you think I present the knife? I mean, it doesn't have Edward's prints on it either. But it is his knife, so you would think it would have his... His prints on it. But then again, he is still saying it's his knife. Or the autopsy. The murder was planned... 6-7-S-12-2. What do you guys think? What... what what, uh, what move should I make now? Because this, like I said, this has me stumped like all hell. So I'm looking for guidance. <laughs> um, wow. I don't know what evidence we can... She's seen him through the the gate. It's only a flesh wound. Hold still. She wouldn't have gotten her coat covered in blood. <sighs> the only thing I could think is presenting that again, but I think I just lost the point. I don't know how the statement contradicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I lost that. What? Well, it goes so well. What 
진짜 저 글쎄 The murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it The music stopped, so this was right Alright, witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. Oh, what the... What's with this case? The bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belong to the prosecutor there. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the digital mommy, our prosecutor, fat people. What the hell was that? That never happened before. The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh! <laughs> she got it! We got it. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh, uh, <laughs> Maybe... Do you think the detective that was murdered was going to kill Miss Sky and she defended herself? Is that that could be the only reason. Order, order, order. Hopefully my chat is still working though because yeah. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Oh, uh, maybe not. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. Right? I believe that next lunch... The next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But... <coughs> This shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Ah! The prosecution could care less if this was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. Oh! If that was the case, why did she hide the body? True. Very true. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. No, need to prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But do you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him? It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she be wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Thank you, Judge. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? Oh, she's pissy. My powers of deduction are not, uh, not to be underestimated. Really now. Angel's deduction. Oh, God. Alana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Oh, okay. Now she's saying she stabbed him more than once. But... The uh, autopsy report states that it was only once. What if she had the gloves because someone called her there to show her something? 
I mean, that could be a possi possibility. Uh, the victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Angel's deduction. And oh, here we go. Alana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. Oh, this this woman is infuriating. Uh, I, I swear to God, you've said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. I don't like when she gets angry. That that that's a look of murder. Not even lying. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Rookie. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Something's half-baked here, alright, and it's you. Definitely. She definitely is! Try not to confuse the defense. Witness, they're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. What do you have to say here, woman? You have no proof that Miss Sky called him there. You have no proof that she didn't. Edgeworth thoughts? There is no record of a call made to the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. She's grasping at straws now because this is retarded. Come on, you could have tried public phone first at least. But then again, the phone in the parking lot itself was dead. So that could have been the phone she used and then somehow broke it? I'm not sure. I'm just throwing that out there. Let's see what you guys think about that. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness? Well, why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. He did work with her on a case two years prior to this. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How, how am I supposed to know? See? We agree there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels, don't you agree? Ah. I, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. <laughs> the freaking judge. The judge is whacked the hell out. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. I don't like her analogy. I don't like anything about her, honestly. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Should I press on this first before I uh, present the autopsy? Stating that the knife was only used once. There was only one hole. And one stab wound. It wasn't again and again. I, honest, I honestly do think I should press it and then come back to it. To see what she has to say here. A human machine. That's a contradiction. Yeah, I, I just did. Please. Can't you find fault with something of substance, Mr. Wright? Note to self, Mr. Edward's sighs... Sighs smell like citrus fruit. 
I'm not even touching that one. Mm -hmm. You say again and again. How many times did she stab them exactly? We often say chop into a thousand pieces, but we don't actually mean one thousand pieces. What difference does it make if the deed is done? I guess she's getting mad at me. Let's just say she stabbed him several times and leave it at that. Leave it at that. This is a murder case, people. Mr. Wright, you should speak up if you have an objection, you know. Miss Star has turned him out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact! I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and... Add more wax and even a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required! Okay, but we're gonna go back to the last one and present the autopsy. Where it states that he was stabbed once. Here. Can she effing read your mind or something? Yeah, pretty much. Due to loss of blood, one knife wound died within an hour and a half. There we go. This was pretty obviously obvious here because it only said she was he was stabbed once. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? And then I'll test you. With my moss surprise- Who the f**k's gonna eat moss? I'm afraid the moss is growing under your feet as we wait, Miss Star. <laughs> Edgeworth pissed her off! Wh what do you mean? I, I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Thank you, Edgeworth. Ah, uh, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm the one who pulled it off. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. God damn it, Emma. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh... Oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. It doesn't show anything on her chest. Edgy effing help it again. <laughs> Yo, let him help all he wants. Believe me. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Well then. Her, her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Her red muffler. Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at the moment I notice, I suppose. She's right. <coughs> this guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. Well... A judge with a bib. That's why this place feels so much like kindergarten sometimes. Actually... I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Star isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance. Chance for what, I wonder? Miss Star has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we got there. 
learns their abilities as a detective. Alright, we already see this. Lana Sky. So I'm gonna go back to the last one and look over the uh the evidence again. There has to be some. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Ain't so flawless now, are we, bitch? <laughs> no, no, she We all knew this to begin with. Objection! She wasn't wearing it in the picture. Miss Star, I demanded. Objection! The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? What? Yo, Edgy, Edgy, stealing the show. He is. He he taking it from me. That's not. That's not cool, Edgeworth. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But but that that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. How does he know exactly what you're gonna say? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, he's psychic. That, that's it. He's just psychic. Ed, edgy, edgy is psychic. That, he's even cooler than he was to begin with. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. No, we do. We're the defense. What was my objection? Chopped liver? Apparently, Phoenix. But, but was there a scar? No, not that. But something re really. Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? what Very well. Witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. He always wanted to be a defense. He did, but you know what? Don't take my show. This is this is this is Phoenix's thing, okay? Look, you, you gotta you gotta throw Phoenix a bone, okay? Especially after helping him. The most important part, the part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Oh, here it comes. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to the side. I quickly caught her, explained her her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. How does a lunch lady arrest people? Ah uh -huh, yes, but when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what I. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Bullshit. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but. Against the Angel Star, resistance is futile. Bullshit, Angel Star. You were quite determined about that scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No, no thanks. No. Note to self. Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. I miss Maya. I'm, I really miss Maya. Maya wasn't that dumb. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Wow. Maya also liked Phoenix, not Edgeworth. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. 
apprehended the suspect. How'd she kick over a oil drum? After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. So, where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Hold it. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said. I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details. Exactly. Finish. Get on. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The lunch, lunch land car was there. She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here. That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes? Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes, that's right. She's not too sure about that. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing, the cover queen, lunch lady, athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So, she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. No, she couldn't. Look how tall that fence is. <clears throat> yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. I'm convinced she did it. <laughs> could be, could be. So how did Miss Sky not get away? There's something up. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just what she could have been talking about the muffler of the car. Maybe there's a damn clue there. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... Oh yeah, we're gonna ask her. How that would... It would've made noises. It, it would've made noises, but the car was off, so... Maybe something's down there? I don't know. And the car wasn't moved. That fence is huge. It's no way she climbed that and was able to catch her in time. No, I don't... I really don't think she did. That, like he said, that fence was nine feet tall, so... Who was... who was she kidding? Unless she leaped onto the truck that was parked there and dove over the damn fence, I don't think she was climbing it that fast. By phone, you do mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene. Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory... It's like a salmon headed upstream, you see. Uh, no, the court doesn't see Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? Very true, because this isn't a good testifying at all. Oh, testimony. 
You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Lana's cell phone updated in the court record. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. I'm gonna press that one. Um, do you think you could restart your testimony for the court? Ah, I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. Oh, okay. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. There's no way, because we found the cell phone closer to the car. It wasn't on that side of that partition where the cell phone was picked up. So there's something up here. And then when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. More like dropped it, you dumbass, because that's what the picture just had. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. Let's press this one and see what she has to say. She made to escape. Can you be more specific? She brushed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see. Like a dollop of lard on a... What? Uh... That's closer where the wallet was. Exactly. Uh, she even kicked over an oil drum at me. The oil drums were on the other side of that wall. Not where she was in her whole little, uh, testimony. An, an oil drum? There was an oil drum laying on its side at the, at the scene of the car. Why am I giving her her food? But it's strange. Hmm. What's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! The parking lot entrance. Th th that's right! It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent! More mysteries! I wish we could solve a few more finding... More, a few before finding more, though. So Miss Guy tried to run. I'm sorry, my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. I try to believe you. I think she just called her back. <laughs> After the murder, I'm on a... Let me see. Yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. I don't know if I have to present something here, or with this one right before that one. But, we found this near the car. And we found the wallet that contained this ID over towards that phone. So, I don't know if I have to show this, or make, maybe even this so we can point out where we found the phone. Because if she's saying it was closer to the security room, we, that's where we would have obviously found the phone. But we didn't. We ended up finding the wallet. I say present the phone when the phone is mentioned. Alright, I'll try that. No, it didn't work. The music didn't stop. Your Honor, the statement contradicts this evidence. Oh, we got three strikes left, guys. <laughs> you weren't right on that one, Tim. 
I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell phone instead. I mean, the chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. I mean, I could probably present this there and show that the there's the entrance there. Why would she run over towards where the barrels were? Because if you're looking at this picture, the barrels are on the right of that partition there in the middle, closer to the car. And if she was trying to get away, why would she go around over towards the barrels to knock one of them down? Do you, you know, and why would she even try to use the phone if she was trying to escape? Why wouldn't she just run out the entrance? It... This part... Ah, oh, fuck. My bad, people. <laughs> she made to escape, she brought... Yeah, we've already seen this. So, I'm just gonna breeze through this. Uh, the other parking lot entrance. It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition. Alright. I'm gonna get back to that, and I'm gonna try the map. The layout, yeah. I'm gonna try to lay out there. At the last one. So far, it's, it's all been the last one. Why must the Avengers hurt me so? Ah, <laughs> Defang seen the Avengers. No, the music didn't stop. This is wrong. It's so wrong! I may have to redo this. I have two more strikes. There it does. I don't see any contradiction. I do want to try the layout again. Should I try the layout here where she mentioned the phone on the wall but used her cell phone instead? We found that there. 512, 518. Should I try presenting the parking lot? Uh, yeah, overhead view thing. Layout! Thank you! <laughs> Should I try presenting it here? I saw it all how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell phone instead. I guess when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler, I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. I mean, that we could present something there too. About how tall that fence was, but I am not entirely sure what to do at this moment. You won before with one strike left. That's true, but now I have two strikes, and I'm just as clueless as the last time. Or how clueless I've been this whole goddamn case. <laughs> it would be kind of fitting that I would have a do over. On the last case because I haven't had a do-over yet <sighs> uh, but I really just don't know I saw it all how she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell phone instead the chief prosecutor made to escape but against angel star resistance is futile Saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall. Did I present that here or on this one? I, I just wanna I just wanna make sure with you guys because Jesus, I don't wanna screw up. But uh I'm gonna try to present the layout again, but on the one night I didn't. She prosecuted made it to escape, but against Angel Star resistance is futile. I saw it all, how she tried the phone. Man, I really enjoyed your stream, but it's been a long day. I'm tired, bro. Going to bed. Can't wait to catch the next case. Alright, man, you have a good night, and thanks again for stopping by, bro. Uh, <laughs> that was really awesome of you, man. Um. Alright. I'm gonna try it here. 
don't think I've tried it here. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm screwed! I am screwed! I am screwed. Alright, one strike. One strike! After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition of, off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arranged her on, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, oh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell phone instead. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. Oh wait, I could save? I'm gonna save here. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh god. Okay, I saw it all. She tried the phone on the wall, but instead... I'm stuck. Yeah, just as much as I am. Tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell phone instead. I know we. It's just a stupid strat. Again, what's wrong? You look like a I do during finals. Never mind, it's nothing. I don't know what to. I don't know what to do here. Maybe it's this. Taken by Angel Star after the crime was committed. Saw it all how she. Tried the phone on the wall, but I had to use her cell instead. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. That's it. I, this is it. The music didn't stop. We are starting over! Ah, oh, Miss Guy got the guilty verdict. Take my first L, people. Take my first L. That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. The defense has failed to give the court sufficient reason to doubt the prosecution's claim. This court finds the defendant, Miss Guy, guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Lovely! Well, that sucked. <laughs> uh, let's try this. Oh, thank God. I should have saved when I had more tries. What, what do we do? <laughs> That's where I'm so stumped. At this point, it's just a guessing game here for me. I don't... Let's get his ID card found at prosecutor's office, scene of the crime. But... Death do... Could have been... Alright. I'm definitely as stumped as all of you, but... Oh, what in the... We have everything that we need, but... What the hell is it we present? We pressed on everything. The part about the partition. The picture proves she didn't run. I quickly caught her... What? Partition off to her side. Is it this picture? Or this picture? 
Also, hi, Defang. <laughs> oh, man. Plus, she was in, like, heels, wasn't she? Kind of. Yeah, no. Oh, god damn it. Let's go through this. We'll load it up again and see about the picture. I'm sorry, Lana. But yeah, I'm taking the L. Well, I tried. You did try. And you failed just like me, sir. Uh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. And that bitch was over here. But... Yeah, I'm, I am ultimately stumped here. I don't know exactly what to do. And I don't exactly want to look up a cheat sheet. But, uh, yeah. God damn. I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't know. We've tried this on, I think, two separate, uh, things. I don't know if this picture is going to work anymore, because we've already used it two or three times. But, as far as anything, the chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. I, mean, I could try to... This picture... I don't know, I think I did that already. Oh hey, it's a whore! I mean, that lunch lady with the hands! Yeah, right? Um... What the hell can I do? Ugh! I'm sorry guys, We're, we may have to look something up. <laughs> Ugh. Is five details. Oh, fucking hell. This, this just has me way too damn stumped to hurt anything. I am so sorry. But, if anything, I want to try one more time before I do anything like that. But, I mean, this is, this is insane. <sighs> the chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. But we've pressed every, again. I'm, I'm sorry this is taking so long, guys. But we've definitely we pressed everything we could. And as far as the evidence goes, I just do not understand how bad this is. Like. Phoenix Red, da da da, I'm not gonna five cover art. Wow! When she says she say her use the phone, how if she was behind the wall? Okay. I saw it all, she how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell phone instead. Baby, yes? 
Yes, boo boo. I see you there. No, wait, no cheats, man. I just got home. <laughs> wait, where was Angel when it all happened? Yes, how would she know if she ran behind the partition? Press her on that. Check the phone. Press her on this one? What time was the last call made on the cell phone? The last call on the cell phone was 518. So, we've already pressed her on everything, but I'll press her again. We'll see. Um, do you think you could restart your testimony for the court? I was going to say this thing. And where was Angel when the call was made? Angel was apparently looking at her. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. This is where it all happened. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. There's no way she could have seen all that. She couldn't have seen her try the phone from where she was. Yeah, no, there's no way. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. And again, we already determined that the phone was found closer to the car. When she's done here, present the floor plan. She's lying because this is wrong. The map. Press the map. Alright. And you saw her doing this. Okay, this is where we want to use that. Okay! Oh, thank God! We only have one strike left! Got the map presented! Alright. Okay. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Star Sky. Objection! The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarried by personal bias. Per yeah. Well, who have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who together with the chief prosecutor kicked me out two years ago. Living whore! <laughs> well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. F you, bitch! <laughs> She's a liar, a whore, and her food tastes like dog shit! It probably does, it's horrible. Uh -huh. Well, let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. Oh, uh, we got you now, bitch! I believe you see what I'm getting at. Look, that smug hoe bitch going down for this bullshit! Yes, she is. Yes, she is. And that emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. Uh, uh. Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. Burn, Phoenix! Grr. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps, oh well, perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. No, we can't. We have one shot, Phoenix. 
Also, we're saving because fuck that. Take that, like you take. No, I'm not saying that. <clears throat> well, the witness lied about what she saw, where she saw it, the order of events. Son of a bitch. Uh, the order of events, where she saw it, what she saw. I'm just gonna say what she saw. She lied about what she saw. In other words, she didn't see Miss Sky using that emergency phone. It does seem har hard to imagine how she could have very logical. What's the matter, Star? Cat got your lunchbox. Um, Mr. Wright, I hate to bother you while you're celebrating your victory. But why would Miss Star lie like that? Huh? Why would she say that my sister had tried to use the phone but failed? It doesn't make any sense. Why lie about something so insignificant? She knew the phone wasn't working in the first place. Oh, dang, she's right. I mean, maybe she really did see her try to use the emergency phone. I say no room for doubt here. You ordered the patootie on rice, right? Fucking hell. Fucking hell. That's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll freaking reload and pick again. God damn it. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not on a roll here this time. It, it's, I'm horrible today. Let's see what we could do here. Where she saw it. There we go. Indy, we're going with your thing, so... Miss Kai tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location. The security room, dummy. Cases always get harder as you go. They really do, man. But Jesus, I didn't think they would get any harder than the last case we had with uh, Edgeworth here. Her boyfriend was there. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony, testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place where... Uh, I want to say here. Take that. Is that take that right? This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A Block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your, testi your testimony, you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security room. Yes. Then how did she get the photo? And save again. Well, I'm going to take his advice and do this again so we could just inch across this case. Oh well, Miss Star. How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could have turned. 
Today a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. Well then. Um. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. As the guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevents. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright? Doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Ah. She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. Objection! It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? what? Fuck you, Phoenix. <laughs> if a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of pre-jury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. Someone explain how the fuck exactly. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Uh, m me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? Uh, yeah, we're doing this again. Okay. Uh, it must make a vital difference, but what would that change? Angle of view to the crime, distance to the crime, difference in lighting. Say, I did save, man! I did! Distance to the crime, angle of view of the crime. Alright, I'm gonna go with uh, what Indy said and say it changes the difference, the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! What she saw is not in, he in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Scott? That's right, she would she had to come off of the second floor. Unless she jumped through the window like Batman. Well, witness? You you Yes. You ordered the squid wheels, right? Quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB and J lunch with fresh bay of but boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. Where'd you get the damn pitcher? And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Holy balls! That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B Block. That's quite a detour. There's no way she had the time. If Miss Star was gonna run, she would have been long gone before then. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. F five, five minutes? She's been lying this whole damn time, so... changes things considerably but 
It was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic fork. Spork. Liar and a bento toten whore. <laughs> you have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! <laughs> uh -oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something! Like, save your game! I'm gonna take her up on that. There we go. Uh, where's an objection? Objection! Five minutes between the witness of the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in the amount of time if you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. Five minutes, my ass. She would have ran by then. She would have, and she still would have had to jump the fence if she had to run all that way. Once she got to the parking lot, she still would have had to jump that nine foot fence. A five minute blank isn't that strange. Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dwindled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable! By the way, dude, congrats on the... Thank you. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness was a, has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth is the next witness ready to go. We have been fortunate at least. I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can, can shut Mr. Wright. Th that was too close. Uh, I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, no! And Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? You were gonna say, yeah? Uh, yes, I was. But family friendly. Uh, that's the one she tried to throw stuff on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What? What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask you, Miss Star. Uh, 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 Defag, no! I don't want to, but I'm gonna allow it. <laughs> uh, is this your jumbo lunchbox? Oh, triple decker! She's winning over on the judge just by the damn food. Out of difference to the witness determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. Oh, she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? She's pulling something out of her box. There ain't no lunch. Indecisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the scene of the crime. Judge, you suck! The judge is an idiot. He, he definitely does suck. He, he, he definitely is an idiot. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. 
Mm, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. This shoe proves it was its flawless, decisive evidence. Well, wh what? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Oh, already that evidence is contradictory. Con yeah, whatever. To the man's heart go through the stomach. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in Forensa. Now she has like six boyfriends! In any case, your, your honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is, is that right, Mr. Wright? Ah yeah, man, six lender jug. She... she's horrible. Wrong shoe, though. The picture shows blood on the defendant's right side. The shoe has blood on the left. It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, <laughs> is, is that right, Mr. Wright? <laughs> it seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty solid. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints with that notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against the witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Oh, dude, I'd stay longer, but I gotta head off and record before too late. Have a good night. Yeah, you too, Wendy. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Sullen. Eddie's face was more than a sullen expression. Boy be tripping. Yeah, he, he definitely was really pissed. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Let's press it off! Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Compared to that, a five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of vile lot known as prosecutors. He wanted to flip shit. <laughs> yeah, he did. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This is when the suspect is admitting she did it. But false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Let's just get this over with. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. 
did I not bring this up? And you found the shoe at the scene of the crime. I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. I want to flip the witness off the stand. She makes me sick. What does she know? Have you fought an elder dragon, bento bitch? I, I, I would like to see her try with those lunch boxes. Damn, that, 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 yeah. What does she know about monsters? She ain't no monster hunter, that's for sure. So like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with the shoe. <laughs> Did he just call her a dog? Jesus, Edgeworth. <laughs> I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon, if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? And you just called her a bitch! He <laughs> carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, lady. In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next. Isn't that, like, a crime in its own right? Can't she go to jail for that type of thing? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. So you brought it to the forensics department. If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need to approve. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by forensics expert. And she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective. Yeah, she should get arrested for removing evidence. At the point... It's contempt. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Oh well. The man was stabbed after all. And the blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman? As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. And the other blood type matched that of defendant Lana Sky. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Uh. Well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. Uh, that's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood drawn to just one person. Or so I hear. Uh, that, that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. <laughs> this shoe proves it was... Flawless, decisive evidence. Does it, though? I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright. Do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? Problem. This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Yeah, there is. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. The gleam in your eyes. You're still a young rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. You couldn't take the heat, could you? 
let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. There's a lot of blood on this damn shoe. Bitch, where the hell is it? Okay, the problem with this evidence is here. Where? Uh, take that finger. Oh, fuck me! I didn't save. That's enough. Shit. Oh, God, I should have saved. I should have saved. Well, let me load that up and get through it real quick. Why were blood on the bottom? No. We'll get back there real quick. Uh, there's an objection. Sit back. Objection. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we have some time since I'm going to be pressing this button a whole bunch of times. Anyway, we gotta fast forward to this. Because, no, objections are objections after all. Hold it! Decisive evidence. This time I'll save before we get to do the shoe. There were, wasn't any footprints. That's true. Oh, here's where she gets the judge to eat the thing. So why is there blood on the bottom? Ugh. Fuck it, super shoe, you dumb bitch. No, 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 no. Oh, come the flip on. Uh, I don't like Phoenix. I don't like Phoenix right fast forward. <laughs> Oh god. It's this this case has been has been something else. This has been the hardest case so far. Two types of blood. On the other, the blood type match Lana Sky. The super is it. It's flaws evidence. I'm gonna press there. I think that's the one. Yeah. Wait a minute. There we go. Let's do this again so we don't have to freaking fast forward again. That's right. Do you have a problem with the shoe? Yes, I have a problem with the shoe. Okay. There we go. Now, fuck you and your peppered fish guts. And. Ollie oop. Take that! Safer. There we go. <laughs> I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Oh, God. That's because it's your shoe. Look at her shoes. They're black. Take that! Oh, the problem lies in the footprint. The, the footprint? Say, note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any blood, f uh, bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Uh, as you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. 
This contradicts your claim about the shoe. Objection! This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Objection! Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because... We checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. That's a threat to your life. Arrest her! <laughs> Definitely was a threat. Order, order, order! Well, witness? Uh, what? Uh, I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright. But... It's true that the lack of footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask... Why there wasn't a footprint? Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think! And save your game, for Christ's sake! Will do! Will do, Emma. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? Oh, Edgeworth, please save me. I see. Now I get it. Uh, get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. Uh, what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. Threatened an attorney's life, stole evidence from the scene of the crime, and effing contempt because she keeps trying to play kangaroo court. <laughs> She'd be in jail for a good while, too. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside and knipped over an oil barrel. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this woman. A leopard. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Uh, oh, that, hmm. I'm not sure. I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt on the lunchbox factory. Witness. Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Ow, fuck. What? Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Uh, I don't... I don't uh, there, you got your roar, okay? <laughs> Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Uh, you don't mean... Yes. The suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. Oh, no. Uh, that ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty. Erasing evidence. That reminds me, this guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on that shoe. Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Oh, let's do this. Ah, uh, I'm gonna fuck things up. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What, what can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she's tried to conceal it. 
Go what? Enough. There was no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution's side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Uh. Hold it! <laughs> oh, God, who? The little girl. What did you just say? Uh. Me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? It was the chest. It's clearly a left shoe. When the injury was on the right. Well, well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister had evidence by, hid evidence by erasing of the bloody footprints. Well, I thought you had your fill, but here you were demanding a stepping helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called evidence. But wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Objection! The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of- She should have been held in contempt of court a long time ago, man. Come on. Your threats don't scare the cover queen. Look at this. A photograph- How many photos does this bitch have? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. But Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in the photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. You're erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after all. Wait, was that? Was that what? You can't say wait. Was that? And not finish. What was on the muffler? Oh, uh, and. It seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. Oh! I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Is she haunting him? Get yourself up off the asphalt and take another look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. Two cases of stealing evidence threatened the attorney's life, and even Edgeworth agrees with me on the contempt of court. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Oh, thank God. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? <laughs> Lock her up. I wish somebody would, honestly. Whatever it is, can it wait? No, no, it can't wait. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. Oh, I'll think later. Yeah, there is a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. Oh! Oh! Oh, look, we're saving again. Oh my god. Just because we might be a failure. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. 
Share the collector problem with this photograph. The problem is, this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment. Mr. Edgeworth! Your Honor. You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a, a car or motorcycle, your honor, you dumb fuck. Just think of it as a part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see. And I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Huh. So what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is an important this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. Uh what what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to the case. Fucking hell. Um. Why is it related? I have no damn clue. Bitch, huh? In your face, I knew I saw something. You did see something. Now help me figure it out. Because this is a bunch of bullshit. The phone. She was talking about the phone. I hope so. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, uh, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ah. <laughs> it could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh. Oh, she dropped her boxes. Um. Well. It seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I find myself wondering uh, about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do not. We do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Ooh, that was a close one. But we made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. Yeah, he's still hungry. God, how much can that fucking judge eat? To be continued. To be continued. But anyway, we're going to save this here, and we're going to call it quits on the stream for tonight. Because, Jesus Christ, that, that that literally has me drained. Mentally. Because I can't take more failure. Goddamn judge, you ate two boxes. No, he ate two boxes, and then he ate that triple box jumbo thing. He ate five boxes. Judge is a fat ass. And I should know something about a fat ass because, well, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, thank you for everyone that showed up and uh, who actually stayed and chatted in uh, chat for a bit. And all that nifty stuff. <laughs> OMFG. What? 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 Let me. What? What, boo boo? 
<laughs> but yeah, we're going to leave this one off here and we'll continue it next time I stream, which will probably be either tomorrow or the day after. But uh, yeah, this was really fun and confusing and I hate the lunch lady so much. So, so much. But she shocked, she, she shocked about the two boxes. <laughs> but anyway, guys, again, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So, uh, bye-bye.